Does your game need doors? Should they rotate to open? Should they slide to open? Should they automatically open whenever the player comes nearby? All of those are great questions to consider in the design phase. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to implement every one of those. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today with doors, you know, doors are just all over the place. If you're talking about a real world environment, you're gonna have some doors. It's not always immediately clear though how to make doors work well in your game. If you model them to be super realistic where most of the doors in real life only open one way, then you end up in some situations where the door opens towards the player or the user and like smacks them in the face or pushes them out of the way and then making the player avoid that makes it even more complicated. In this video, we're gonna make two kinds of doors. We're gonna make rotating doors and we're gonna make sliding doors. With both of these, we're gonna have the option to have the doors automatically open when the player becomes within some range or within a trigger of that door. With the rotating doors, though, we'll also have the benefit of being able to choose whether we want the door to open realistically where it'll hit you in the face sometimes, or if we're gonna open it away from the player every time, which I personally find to make the game flow a little bit better than the realistic doors. With the concepts that we're implementing today, you can implement any kind of door that you need for your game. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. In this scene, I've already set up a lot of what we're going to do. Since we've upgraded our Unity version to 2020.3.20 F1, we can use the new starter assets for a first person controller. And we're using that so that way we can move around in the scene. So what we're going to do is implement two kinds of doors, sliding and rotating doors. We're going to start with rotating doors that we have to press a button to interact with. Then we'll implement it where the doors will automatically open whenever we come into a range. Once we've made all the rotating doors work, we'll start taking a look at the sliding doors, which will again work by pressing a button or by just entering in some range. This is the standard player capsule that the starter assets give us, so I'm not going to go over too much of what this does because honestly I haven't looked into it too much. It just lets us move around. And on the inputs, because this uses the new input system, what we have to do is define a new action that we're going to call use. Set up with a binding. I'm going to choose E because I played Counter-Strike and that's what use was in Counter-Strike and set it to be on the keyboard and mouse control scheme. Because the player input has a behavior set as send messages, we see that a new event on use will get sent to any scripts that are attached to this behavior. And I've already created the scripts in this case. I've created a door, a door trigger, and player actions. So in player actions, later we're going to define a function called on use, which will get automatically called whenever you press E. First things first, let's start with the door. We'll define a public bool is open, set that to false by default. A private serialized field bool is rotating door, set that to be true by default because we're not doing sliding doors yet. A private serialized float speed, set that to 1f by default, that'll be how quickly the door will open and close. I'll add a header called rotation configs because again, later we're gonna do some sliding configs and we wanna keep them a little bit separate in the inspector. We'll do a private serialized float rotation amount, set that to 90F by default. This will be how much the door should rotate to open. And a private serialized float forward direction, set that to be zero by default. This is gonna be the number that we compare our dot product to, and we'll talk about how that works in just a little bit. We'll have a private vector three start rotation that we're gonna assign on awake, a private vector three forward that we will also assign on awake, and a private coroutine animation coroutine. On awake, we'll do start rotation equals transform.rotation.euler angles, and we'll also assign forward to be transform.right. That might sound a little bit weird, but if we take a look at these doors, the way that they're oriented, forward on them is actually pointing straight into the door frame. So if we count that as forward, then it's actually impossible to tell which side of the door the player's on. So in this case, I'm assigning it to be the right side. So if the player's on this side, then we'll know that that is forward and we should maybe open away from the player. Next up, let's define a public void open that accepts a vector three user position. The first thing we'll do is check if the door is not already open. If it is already open, we don't wanna do anything. We'll then stop the animation curve routine if it's not null and check if this is a rotating door. If it is rotating, 
rotating door. Then we'll get the dot product doing float dot equals vector three dot, passing in the forward and taking a user position minus transform position and normalizing that vector. Then we'll log the dot product so we can see what it is for some explanation purposes here in just a second. And then animation coroutine equals start coroutine, passing in do rotation open, passing in the dot that we just calculated. And to give just a really quick explanation of what the dot product does is given the particular forward that we've passed in here, the second vector that we pass in, which we're using the normalized direction towards the player, this will give us a number between negative one and one, indicating where in relation to this forward the player is. This is really useful because negative one means they are directly behind this forward and one means they are directly in front of this forward. This allows us to do exactly what we were talking about earlier, is determine whether the player is in front or behind the door, and then we can open the door away from the player. We'll then define a private I enumerator do rotation open that accepts a float forward amount. That's going to be that dot product that we just calculated. In there, we'll define a quaternion start rotation and set that to be the transform dot rotation. We'll also define a quaternion end rotation. And we're going to wait to assign that a value because we're first going to check if the forward amount is greater than or equal to the forward direction. If it is, then we're going to assign the end rotation to be quaternion dot Euler, passing in a new vector three. I'm passing zero for the X and the Z because my doors are always standing up straight. If you want to have your doors at weird angles, you can also use the start rotation dot x and z instead of zero here. Then for the y, we'll use start rotation dot y and subtract out the rotation amount and use zero for the z. If the forward amount is less than the forward direction, then we're going to do end rotation equals quaternion dot Euler, passing in a new vector three, using zero again for the x, the start rotation dot y plus the rotation amount this time, and zero for the z. Because of what we just talked about with the dot product, that means that the door will open away from the player. If we set the forward direction to be negative one, then the door will always open with a negative rotation amount. If we set the forward direction to be greater than one, then we will always open the door with a positive rotation amount. Now that we have the start and end rotation are two targets, let's set is open to be true, so that way immediately this door will allow us to close it as soon as we've opened it. We'll define a float time to be zero and say while time is less than one. We'll assign the transform.rotation to be quaternion slurp. That's just spherical lerp. It makes it a little bit more interesting than a straight lerp. It works the exact same though. We'll pass in the start rotation, the end rotation, and then the time. Over the period of zero to one on time, we're going to go from the start rotation to the end rotation. We're going to yield return null, so we wait for the next frame, and then do time plus equals time dot delta time times speed. That way we can make the door open faster or slower by controlling the speed. So this will open our door. The next thing we're gonna do is do the close because what good's a door that can only be opened? For the close, we're gonna do almost the same thing we did on open where we first check if it is open. We'll then check if the animation coroutine is not null. So if it's running, we'll stop it. We'll then check if this is a rotating door. If it is, then we're going to do animation coroutine equals start coroutine do rotation close. And for our do rotation close, we'll do another private I enumerator do rotation close. And we're going to do again almost the exact same thing we did on open quaternion start rotation equals the current rotation that's transform dot rotation. And the end rotation this time is going to be the actual start rotation. So we're going to do quaternion end rotation equals quaternion Euler passing in the start rotation. Then we're going to say is open is false. Define a float time time equals zero and say while time is less than one. Transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot slurp again, passing in the rotation, the end rotation, and the time. We're then going to yield return null and assign time plus equals time dot delta time times speed. Next up, let's do the player actions. In here, what I'm going to want to happen is have some text show up wherever the player is looking if they're hitting a door that they can open. That way, we're going to prompt the player to press E to open that door if it's a usable door. So I'm going to define a private serialized text mesh pro use text, a private serialized transform the camera, a private serialized float max use distance set that to be 5F by default, and a private layer mask that's also serialized called use layers. That way we can choose to only raycast on some specific layers. Then we'll define the public void on use, which is going to be magically called by the new Unity input system because we've created a new input called use, and that will get triggered whenever we press the E button. So in here, whenever the user presses E, we're going to do if physics.raycast camera.position camera.forward passing out a raycast hit, the max use distance, and the use layer. So that'll return true if we are looking at a door that's on these layers that's within this max use distance away. If hit.collider try get component door out door door. If that returns true, that means that the component that we hit does have a door component on it. So then we'll get a reference to that door and we can check if door is open, then we're gonna close the door. And if it's not open, then we're gonna open the door passing in the transform.position. So this current transforms position. So that'll actually let us open up the door whenever the player presses E, but we also wanna show that text to kind of give the, the feeling that, okay, yeah, I can do this. The hint that you can do this. You're looking at something that can be done. Go ahead and do it. 
So we'll do private void update. We're gonna actually copy paste these two conditions that we did on use because we want the exact same thing to be checked. And I'm gonna combine them into a single condition, just to make it a little bit flatter. And then say, if door is open, we're gonna do use text.set text, passing in close. And then telling them to press E. Otherwise we're gonna do the opposite and say open. We'll then set the use text game object to be active. We'll set the position based on wherever we hit with hit.point. And then I'm gonna subtract out the hit.point minus camera.position normalized times 0.01. So that way we set the text just a little bit closer to the camera. That way we don't have that weird kind of Z fighting where the text is on the exact same Z of the wall and you kind of get that flickering. We're gonna remove that by doing this offset of 0.01 in the direction of the camera. We're then gonna also do use text.transform.rotation equals quaternion.lookrotation, passing in the hit.point minus the camera.position position and normalizing that so that way it will be looking towards the player so it's oriented the right way and if that first physics raycast fails or the hit thing does not have a door component then we're just going to go ahead and turn off the use text doing use text.gameobject.set active to be false that's all we're going to do in here if we hop back to the unity editor so let's select this first door that says use to open slash close opens away from the player cool this already has a door it's a rotating door it's closed we're using all the default everything that's cool if I quickly just model another door with ProBuilder and we compare that to our current door, you'll notice that it has this secondary kind of slice in the middle. And if I rotate the door, it rotates on a hinge. And if we compare that to this cube I just made and I rotate this cube, it kind of spins more towards the center. In ProBuilder, there's an option to center the pivot. If I click that, you see the texture changes some. And then if I start rotating it, you'll see that it actually rotates in the center. And so that weird kind of offset thing that was happening before. I'm just gonna show you how to do it in ProBuilder because again, I don't know how to do it in a 3D modeling program. If you're using ProBuilder, what you can do is choose this little edge selection tool, select one of the edges that goes perpendicular to where you want it to go and press, for me, it's Alt-U. And Alt-U is the same as insert edge loop in this ProBuilder window. The important thing that that lets us do is select this edge, then click set pivot, do the object selection again and start rotating this object. We'll see it now rotates on the hinge just like our door. That's really important anytime you have a rotating object, you need to make sure that's gonna rotate from the way that you expect. And with ProBuilder, as you kind of expand and collapse your objects, they don't always have the pivot you expect them to have. So make sure you override it to be whatever you want it to be. So the default settings we have make it work exactly like that where the door is gonna open away from the player all the time. If we use the use to open close opens normally, what I'm gonna do is override the forward direction to be 1.5 because that's not something the dot product will ever return and so it will only ever open one way. Really, you can choose any value of over one and it will behave this way or any value under negative one and it'll behave the same way. It'll just control which way it's gonna open by default. The other thing we need to do is go ahead and hook up our player actions. So remember the player action needed use text. I just made some 3D text that's disabled. Right click 3D object text and then resize it to be something reasonable. It also needs reference to the camera, so I'm gonna drag the main camera and configure the use layers to be usable. I've added two layers here, usable and player, and I've not modified the physics colliding at all. The doors are also on the usable layer. Let's go ahead and click play and see what happens. Cool, as I walk up to this door, we see this open E thing comes up. If I move the mouse around, we'll see that it updates. Pretty cool. I press E. Wonderful, it opens away from me. Let me open up the console. Okay, so here you can see that the dot is negative 0.9. So I'm almost completely behind this door is what it thinks. If I cross the other side, we'll see that the door then opens the other way because the dot product is again a negative number. And regardless of where I position myself around this door, the door will always open away from me. This makes a lot smoother gameplay for your users whenever they don't have a door hit them in the face. If I go over to the use open slash close opens normally door, we'll see that the door opens away from me by default. So we can't tell the difference until I come to the other side and then I try to use the door and we see that the door opens towards me. Interactable doors are cool, but sometimes maybe you just want doors to automatically open. So let's take a look at those. As you can see, we only have one door trigger per door that wants to automatically open. We'll open up the door trigger class at a private serialized field door called door and on trigger enter that accepts a collider other we're going to do if other dot try get component and I'm going to use the character controller here. You can use any component that you know is on the same game object that has the rigid body or the character controller. I'm going to check if the door is not open. If it's not, then we will open the door passing in the other transform dot position. And I'm actually going to copy paste this into on trigger exit, which also accepts a collider other because we're going to do the exact same thing, except check that if the door is open, we will close it. 
If we hop back to the Unity editor, drag our two doors to our two door triggers that we're using for the rotating doors. And again, we're gonna change the door that automatically opens and closes normally. This time we'll set the forward direction to be negative 1.5. And one other thing here is we're going to go ahead and mark the doors as the default layer because we don't want to show to the player that they can use this door because it's going to automatically open for them. There's no need for them to try to use it and mess up the automatic magic that's happening. I'm also going to hook up the sliding doors door trigger door reference so we don't get a null reference exception. Let's go ahead and click play and see what happens. There we go, it works perfectly. The door still opens away from the player whenever we walk into the zone, and we can of course customize the size of this trigger to be any size or any shape that we want it to be. The one that opens like a normal door opens away from me, but then I go to the other side and it hits me in the face, so that's not ideal, but is more realistic. Doors do like to hit me in the face. Now we gotta figure out how to do the sliding doors. We're gonna follow the exact same principles we just talked about for the rotating doors of assigning the initial state on awake and then sliding the door whenever the player either uses it or comes within the range. Since the sliding doors don't really need to move away from the player, we don't need to consider the player's position whenever we're doing the sliding opening because they're just gonna slide off to the side. The thing we do need to worry about is that the door frame is large enough to hide the door whenever it opens because if these doors slide left where we have the rotating doors, you'd actually see the door come out the other side and that's not really a good experience, right? Let's go ahead and open up the door script again and start implementing the sliding doors. At the top, we'll add a new header called sliding configs to group our new two sliding configs that we're gonna create, which are a private serialized vector3 slide direction. I'll set that to be vector3 back by default. A private float serialized as well. That's a slide amount set that to be 1.9 by default. This is gonna be how far the door should slide when it's opening. I chose 1.9 because the doors are two meters wide. So to move most of the ways, you can still see it a little bit poking out and it won't have any Z fighting with the edge of the door if I set it to be two exactly. So we chose just a little bit smaller number than the door size. We'll define a private vector three start position and on awake, we'll assign that to be transform.position. If we scroll down and take a look at the open function, we have this condition to check if the door is a rotating door. So we'll say else animation coroutine equals start coroutine do sliding open. We'll define that do sliding open as a private i enumerator do sliding open. We'll define a vector three end position to be a start position plus slide amount times a slide direction. So that's gonna take our starting position. We're gonna add in how far we wanna go and then multiply by the direction we wanna go. The important thing then is that the slide direction needs to be a normalized vector. If it has something larger than one, we'll actually go farther than the slide amount. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're setting the slide direction. We'll set the start position to be the transform dot position. We'll define a float time to be zero and set is open to be true. We'll then do while time is less than one and we'll do transform.position equals vector three lerp, passing in the start position, the end position, and the time. Again, yield a return to null and then assign time to be plus equals time dot delta time times the speed. Very much the same as what we were doing on the open and the close from before. There should be no surprises here. Speaking of no surprises, let's go ahead and do the close. In close, we'll again check if it's not a rotating door. So the else condition here, we'll do animation coroutine equals start coroutine, do sliding close. And at the very bottom, we'll define that as a private I enumerator Numerator, do sliding close, and you already know it's going to be in there. We're going to do vector three end position equals start position, vector three start position equals transform dot position. We'll define a float time to be zero, we'll set is open to be false, and while time is less than one, we'll assign transform position to be again vector three lerp start position and position time. Yield return null, and assign time to be plus equal time dot delta time times speed. If we go ahead and hop back to the Unity editor, we'll go ahead and select this first door, uncheck is rotating door, the slide direction being negative one on the Z looks like it works out well because that's gonna go to the right, and we'll leave the other configs alone. The other automatically opening door, let's go ahead and make it go the other way so it'll slide to the left by setting the Z to be a positive one, and we'll also uncheck the is rotating door for that one. Let's go ahead and click play. Beautiful. I walk up to the door, it shows me my text, I go ahead and press E, it slides off to the right, just as we expected. I can walk through and close it again. The automatically opening door works the exact same way, just going off to the left instead. If we go ahead and update the speed to be something, I don't know, three, three times as fast. It's kind of got that more sci-fi feel where the doors are super fast and just open up. You could even imagine like the air hissing as it goes by. With that, you should be able to implement doors into your game without any issue that can open a variety of different kinds of ways, either being used, automatically opening, rotating or sliding. That covers most of the cases that doors could be. Maybe you can come up with some other ones, but this should give you a really good foundation to implement doors into your game. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow. 
reach more people and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every Tuesday and I'll see you next week.